Well, uh, thank you very much, Nicholas. Uh, I'm happy to join this uh, panel to discuss the future of uh, world trade and the global trading system. And uh, many of you may have not uh, noticed that uh, last Monday this week, it's uh, uh, 30 October, marked 70th anniversary of GATT, which is the predecessor of WTO and origins of multilateral trading system. And uh, we believe that WTO and its predecessor, the GATT, hugely contributed to global uh, prosperity in the past decades. And uh, between 1950 and 2016, global GDP increased tenfold, while the global trade increased 39-fold. I think uh, it's largely due to the increasing economic openness fostered by multilateral trading system. So I would like to make uh, three uh, points. First, now many people feel as if the global trading system is now on the verge of collapse. But actually, I think the multilateral trading system remains strong and solid. We all saw the value of uh, this system during the financial crisis. And in 1930s, the financial crisis, I mean, the protectionist measures wiped out two thirds of the world trade. But uh, in, in the crisis of 2008, we didn't see such a escalation because our member governments knew that they were all bound by the multilateral rules. They knew where their boundaries were. So I truly believe that a multilateral trading system represents the best world efforts to keep protectionism and economic tensions at bay. And my second point is we must be aware that many people feel disconnected from the economic progress. And uh, attitudes toward trade and globalization have hardened recently. And in some countries, tra trade is often singled out as a destructive force in labor market. Well, trade does have effect. The technology and the technological progress is actually the major force driving changes and disruption. And it's true everywhere in any economy. Automation, digitization, new managerial techniques hugely reduced demand for labor uh, in employment. So we can see that uh, in reality, according to our survey, more than 80% of job losses are due to uh, productivity gains, due to technological progress, not to cheaper, labor, uh, cheaper uh, imports. But again, trade is often pointed as a culprit here. But in fact, as mentioned, technology and trade are essential for economic progress. We cannot reject those forces. Instead, we had better embrace and, and adapt. So I think the uh, The current trend of turning against the trade will, solve, uh, will not solve any problem. Instead, raising barriers to trade will only make uh, the situation even worse. They will not bring the jobs back. So the better response to these uh, 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 challenges is to have a more active 
domestic policies to support workers and equip them with the skills to compete in the modern marketplace. So let me move to uh, my third point. It's also the, the, the topic of the today. I think the key question before us today is about the future of WTO. I truly believe that none of the global trade challenges can be easier solved outside of multilateral trading system. In fact, the opposite is the case. For example, you can hardly imagine that you can manage an increasing borderless digital economy or respond to the globalization of the internet through bilateral agreements. It is also impossible for countries to limit their agriculture or fishery subsidies via regional ar arrangements. I'm not trying to say that uh, bilateral or regional approaches are not important. They absolutely are. But uh, what I'm trying to say is they are on their own. They, uh, they cannot be sufficient. They can only uh, supplement multilateral trading system, and they can act as blood, uh, uh, block, uh, 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 building blocks for the global system. But the multilateral approach is essential and indispensable. Nevertheless, I believe that the WTO can and should do more to evolve and to improve. I mean, before us, there are a lot of long-standing issues, as uh, uh, Minister Bart mentioned. When you were the minister, you discussed those issues, like uh, agriculture subsidies, fishery subsidies, domestic regulations of services sectors, and so on. Those issues are still standing there to be resolved. But meanwhile, we also see that there is increasing interest among some members to discuss those forward-looking issues like e-commerce and investment facilitation. However, we have to recognize that there is no easy or obvious solution on any of those fronts. Because we, if we want to find a solution, we need to get consensus. That is to say, we need to bring all the WTO members on board. It's very challenging and very difficult. Ultimately, the future of WTO is in the hands of its members. We are a member-driven organization. So it is there, I mean, our members shared responsibility to bolster global economic cooperation and to leave a strong and well-functioning multilateral trading system for future generations. Let me stop here. Just, just a quick follow-up, but are you suggesting that there's a, an issue of uh, governance at the WTO? You mean the, the governance? I think it's the uh, economic governance is a, a global issue in a lot of international organizations, in IMF, World Bank, WTO, and uh, we have to face that challenges. But uh, the current problem is we lack of the leadership in WTO, so that's why I said we hope all members share collective uh, responsibility to promote multilateral uh, uh, trading system and to keep it strong. 